Hi everybody, we all understand just how important applying is in your exams, when you're backing up your points, when you're evaluating, when you're writing a judgment. In microeconomics, yeah, you need to have examples for everything you write. So as we go through this video, write down everything. Your job is to try and memorize these examples for sure. If you want more details, just go and research these and you'll get tons of detail and that will really help you get the top grades when it comes to your final exams. Let's go by looking at scarcity issues around the world and real life examples of demand shifting, supply shifting, market processes. Real life examples of scarcity, water scarcity issues in India and in Cape Town, South Africa, drought ridden countries here. Also look at food scarcity worldwide. If we look at markets where demand is shifting right, well, we can see that demand for Spanish holidays in the UK has been increasing significantly. Also, demand for key commodities like oil has been rising. Rising incomes in China are a key determinant there. Also in the UK, a change in fashion towards low or no alcoholic drinks driving up demand. What about demand shifting left? Well, less demand for student housing in the UK as the cost of university education is going through the roof. Students looking at saving money, especially by not living in uh, student housing in the UK, finding alternative uh, ways here. That means staying at home instead and going to local universities instead. Demand for print newspapers shifting left as we move online. That's been a trend over the last few years. And demand for dining in. We've seen that recently, haven't we? Shifting left. Why? As we look at cheaper alternatives, cheaper substitutes. Deliveroo services, for example. Just Eat as a good example too. Supply shifting right. India, subsidies for gas, fuel, rice, reducing costs of production massively. The idea of subsidizing these items, affordability. Air travel in the UK, more and more firms entering the market here, increasing, increasing supply, driving down prices. If we look at supply shifting left, fizzy drinks in the UK with the implementation of the sugar tax, increasing costs for producers, right? And increasing prices of them at the end. If we look at ice cream, in particular vanilla ice cream, the price of vanilla has shot up recently. Very high uh, increase in price of vanilla here. And that's increasing the cost of producing vanilla ice cream, increasing prices of them. And also gas electricity supply has shifted left. Uh, weather issues have really hit to the supply of gas electricity, increasing wholesale prices here. If we now look where demand is priced in elastic, look no further than goods like cigarettes, alcohol, sugary drinks, fast food, you could argue quite addictive goods here. Public transport, necessity, demand for this new iPhone, iPhone 10. We all know how the price increased significantly for this iPhone, but Apple have recently said that revenues have increased significantly, a sign of quite significant price in elastic demand. And basic commodities, absolutely. Uh, very uh, few substitutes available and necessity goods for basic commodities. What about supply? Uh, goods where supply is priced in elastic? Again, basic commodities, hard to store them, large production lags. Gas, electricity, housing. Heathrow and Gatwick Airport, very, very low spare capacity in these airports. Hence, very priced in elastic supply. Complementary goods, Nespresso machines and the capsules, printers and the ink, games consoles and the games, substitute goods, any fast food chains you could argue substitutes, but especially the burgers, yeah, Big Mac, Whopper, smartphones, we all know, absolutely yeah, massive substitutes here. Normal goods, where incomes rise, demand will increase, restaurant dining, so in uh, restaurant dining here, foreign holidays, designer clothing theatre, house renovations, we demand more of these as we get richer. Whereas in fury goods, as we get richer, we demand less of these things. Fast food, public transport, staycations, are holidaying at home, and own brand food, yeah, own brand food. So all good examples. Let's move on now and look at market failure examples. I have a video, guys, with very specific application of market failure. You've got numbers to a lot of these things. If you want to watch that video, just click right there and you'll be able to see that video and get the exact numbers. But this is excellent for core generic application. Let's go. Negative externalities in production, so third party costs when there is production activity. Manufacturing, manufacturing of uh, chemicals and metals of clothing will generate air pollution, will generate waste which is often dumped into rivers or seas. Driving cars, congestion and air pollution, noise pollution. Resource depletion, impact on current and future generations. Resource degradation, deforestation, loss of biodiversity, desertification, many examples of third party costs as a result of production. What about negative externality in consumption, i.e. demerit goods here? Well, when we smoke cigarettes, excessive alcoholic drinking, uh, excessive sugar intake, fat intake, chewing gum and dropping on the streets, sunbeds and the link to skin cancer, red meat, absolutely, these are all good examples. Excessive consumption of these things will generate significant negative externalities. Positive externality in consumption, we're looking at merit goods here, well vaccinations, healthcare, education are the classics, but also public transport, exercise, school lunches, or generate positive externalities in their consumption. 
positive externalities in production, so third party benefits through production here, in work training, R&D, childcare, significant benefits to third parties of these three things here. Public goods we know are non-excludable and non-rival, really good examples. Flood defences, roads, bridges, beaches, national parks, road signs, street lights, defence, traffic lights, loads of examples, all government provided in the UK, a good sign of public good here. And common access resources, resources where there is no private ownership at all. We'll think the resources that the seas provide, minerals, seafood, the air and, CO and O2, oxygen, forests, yeah, we think about the resources what that we get when we cut down trees here, timber, pulp. What about solutions to market failure, policies to market failure, real life application there? Let's look at real life examples of indirect taxes to solve market failure, where we have cigarette duty, alcohol duty, the recent implementation of sugar tax, carbon tax, fuel duty, and debated at the moment are whether we need a latte tax, a tax on coffee cups, and a plastics tax as well to fight against plastic waste. Subsidy and market failure, electric car subsidies in the UK, but also in Canada they exist. Solar panel subsidies, public transport subsidies, bus and rail subsidies in particular, very strong. Research and development, in-work training, adult training, all get significant subsidies as well. If we look at regulation to solve market failure, let's generalize the categories and then look at specific examples. So we look at bans, smoking bans, ban on uh, smoking advertising. We look in uh, France here, uh, the bans of refills of soft drinks. We look at also proposed bans of cotton buds, proposed bans of plastic straws in the UK. Yeah? So good examples there. Limits like age limits and time limits are very clear. Well, things like alcohol and cigarettes. Compulsory regulations, yeah, like forced negative advertising. Um, when it comes to cigarette packaging, uh, forced calorie content on menus like they have in the, in the US, forced nutrition information, traffic light systems like we have on food items and drink items in the UK, but also certain countries like Italy proposing forced vaccinations against the flu, against measles. Yeah, so good examples there. Quotas such as uh, caps on CO2 emissions, uh, fishing quotas as well like we have in the EU, and also innovative regulations like uh, Theresa May is proposing this DRS, this Deposit Recycling Scheme in the UK. Innovative regulation. If you want to see more innovative regulations, just search for Beijing Road Space Rationing Policies. You'll see some really innovative regulations to take cars off the road there. State provision. Well, the NHS, state schools in the UK, various public goods, uh, like we've mentioned here. Tradable pollution permit schemes. Well, the Kyoto Protocol is this big idea of pollution permit scheme to reduce uh, carbon emissions in the world. In the EU, we have our uh, emissions trading scheme, our own uh, tradable pollution permit scheme, so good to know that. Minimum prices to solve market failure, well, alcohol minimum pricing in Scotland, very recently implemented here, 50, pr uh, 50 pence minimum price per unit of alcohol in Scotland. Uh, very much a new thing there. Maximum price and market failure, well, rent control, we're seeing rent control in New York and Berlin, proposed by Jeremy Corbyn as well, if he wins the next election in 2020, uh, 2022, he's going to impose rent control uh, in London. But also the energy price cap that the Conservative Party have just launched and maximum prices on basic food items in Venezuela. Good examples there. Let's now move on and look at market structures. There are no real life examples of perfect competition, but there are markets that come very, very close. Market stores like fruit and veg market stores here, tuk-tuks like in India, like in Thailand, foreign exchange, all very, very close to perfect competition. What about very highly competitive markets generally, or well, fast food, especially in the US, cars in the EU, short haul airlines in the UK, supermarkets in the UK, great examples. Monopolistic competition, taxis very much so, clothing, restaurants, hotels, streaming, yeah, music streaming, uh, online streaming for TV shows and films, great examples, coffee shops, hairdressers and salons. Examples of competitive oligopoly, supermarkets, often price competition and non-price competition. Soft drinks, non-price competition there. Cars, mobile phones, short-haul airlines here. What about non-competitive oligopoly, maybe collusive oligopoly? Well, when it comes to energy, yes, yeah, so gas, electricity in the UK, supermarket fuel providers, bus companies, non-competitive oligopoly here. Real life examples of monopoly power. We're talking more legal monopoly here. So companies with more than 25% market share in a given market. Some great examples here. Google search is something like 88% market share. Unbelievable. Durex is still there. Huge market share. Very important to mention this. Yes, we're talking condoms, but hey, condoms are important. They're necessities. The worst thing is to have a monopoly uh, when it comes to necessity items. And boy, we do in the UK with something like 80% market share. Yeah, super size. Gazprom across the European Union here, 
uh, with Monopoly Power. Merlin Attractions in the UK, not many people know about that one, but a very good example. Majority theme park provider in the UK. Merlin owns so much when it comes to theme parks. Thorpe Park, Alton Towers, Chessington, World of Adventures, Legoland, and lots of other attractions like Madame Tussauds, like the London Dungeon. They own all of those, do Merlin. Stagecoach have got lots of local monopoly power, like in Cambridge. The London Underground, UPS, have a global market share of 26%. VW in the UK, 26-27% EU market share there. Tesco in the UK, around 28%. Uh, market share. Motorway fuel provider is currently being investigated by the CMA, supposedly having monopoly power as well. Real life examples of price discrimination, first degree, Amazon, go and research that, great example. Third degree, yeah, rail, airlines, Uber with surge pricing, and hotels, yeah, increasing prices uh, when there is inelastic demand in the market, reducing prices when there is price elastic demand, third degree, great examples here. What about examples of natural monopoly? Well, rail infrastructure, so network rail, natural monopoly, utilities, posts, a lot of these services, a lot of these markets are natural monopoly markets. We have examples of contestable markets here. Taxis, hotels, fast food, airlines, parcel delivery, streaming. You just think about firms that have entered the market here, clearly illustrating that these markets are very contestable markets for sure. Examples of loss-making companies. Hey, this could be quite important for this year's exams. You never know illustrating on a diagram, right, loss-making companies, whether it's a monopolistic competition, maybe even monopoly, right, loss-making companies in perfect competition as well or in competitive markets. Where can we go to? Well, Blackberry, we all know about Blackberry, Monarch Airlines, how they uh, disappeared in November last year, Toys R Us, recent examples, New Look, Maplin, restaurant chains like Byron Burger, like Chimichanga, like Prezzo, yeah, all shutting down recently and closing stores. Great examples for you right there. What about um, examples of markets where there are huge economies of scale? Well, look at energy, look at supermarkets, airlines, technology firms, online retailers, huge different examples of economies of scale that they all exploit here. Let's now move into uh, objectives of firms, profit maximization, pharmaceuticals look to profit max, electronics, why? Because reinvestment into innovation, into R&D, into brand new products is very important, part of the business model when it comes to these markets. What about sales maximization or growth maximization? Cost in the UK are looking to rival Starbucks by having more stores, develop brand loyalty, develop awareness, and then look to profit max. We also look at Netflix, Amazon, Spotify. Yeah, they were old examples for sure of growth maximizing, trying to get us to have accounts with them, right? Develop loyalty again and then look to change the object their objective. Maybe we can argue now their objective is changing towards profit max. Great examples for you to use there. Corporate social responsibilities, yeah, Disney, absolutely. Starbucks, yeah, the way in which they source their coffee beans and the way in which they pay their suppliers here. Microsoft with their charitable activities, Bill Gates Foundation, Body Shop, you know, how they test their products not on animals. Ben and Jerry's as well, the way they source and their ingredients as well. We look at real life examples of monopoly regulation. This is very important. So RPI price capping on trains, on Gatwick landing charges, RPI minus X on Heathrow landing charges, RPI plus K when it comes to uh, price regulation of water companies in the UK. We look at quality control regulation, we look at rail providers, the number of delays that they're allowed a day before they have to start paying compensation. Same thing when it comes to airlines, right? Uh, we can argue the same thing. If they have too many delays, they have to pay their customers compensation. Internet providers, if they don't provide a certain internet speed, they can compensate, they have to compensate their customers. Energy as well, and uh, when they're allowed to take away supply for certain people and when they're not. So for vulnerable households, the elderly, the poor, even if they can't afford to pay their bills, they have to still provide energy. That's all quality control regulation here. Mergers, very important for you to know. Great example, recent merger, NPower and SSC being investigated by the CMA. Also, most recent one, this proposed merger of Sainsbury's and Asda. Make sure we know about that in lots of detail as well. Great example. Recent examples of privatization, Royal Mail in 2013, rail services in 1992. If we look at deregulations, great examples, recent ones, airlines in the early 1990s, buses in the 1970s, good to know those markets well. Nationalization, proposed nationalizations by Jeremy Corbyn here of rail services, it's a big one of his, of energy markets, water, and raw mail to renationalize that as well. So great examples there. Let's finish now, guys, by looking at labor market application. Let's look at labor markets where we've seen demand shifts. We'll look at demand shift right for certain workers. Well, pilots, air traffic controllers, childminders, and app developers, we can argue for the first three, it's more demand for the final product. 
whereas for app developers it's that, but it's also maybe an increase in price of the final product, driving demand for these guys. Whereas demand shifting left for bank clerks, for advertising agency workers, we can argue for this one, that more companies are looking to do their advertising in-house rather than hire advertising agency workers, so less demand as firms look to keep their costs low doing their advertising on their own in-house. Where is demand for labour wage inelastic? Well, for Premier League, work, uh, Premier League footballers, for plumbers, for electricians, these guys are very hard to substitute for capital here. So even if wages are being driven up, uh, you're not going to see a big fall in employment of these guys. Where is demand for labour wage elastic? Call centre workers, yeah. Because in call centres, workers and wages are a big percentage of total costs. Also, they can be easily substituted for, for capital, for technology. Where have we seen supply and labour shifting left? Low-skilled worker, yeah, the recent Brexit vote. A lot of low-skilled workers are now leaving the UK, going back home, uncertain with what their position is going to be and once we actually leave the EU. What about supply and labour shifting right? Shelf fillers, yeah, a lot of graduates now ending up in non-graduate jobs. It's crazy how much that's happening. A lot of graduates with great degrees ending up, sh you know, filling shelves in Tesco and things. So increasing the supply of shelf fillers here, dropping wages significantly for these professions. We look where uh, the supply of labour is wage inelastic. We have doctors, engineers, accountants, pilots, lawyers. Length of the training period being very high, the nature of skills being very high as well, making supply of labour quite wage inelastic. Whereas where is the supply of labour wage elastic? Well, travel agents, waitresses, driving instructors are absolutely good examples here. What about good examples of monopsony employment? Well, look at the NHS, a huge employee here, one of the biggest employees in the world. Uh, look at state schools, you have monopsony employer again being the UK government. Walmart, the dominant monopsony employer in the world, and also McDonald's, massive employees here globally, Walmart and McDonald's. The living wage in the UK is £7.83 an hour, good to know. That's for uh, people aged above 25. UK Gini coefficient 0.34, good to know that. And also policies in the UK to redistribute income. Not just in the UK, there's one other example as well. There's generally policies that can be used to redistribute income. Do we have any real life examples? Well, we always go with taxing the rich as a theoretical example. Where do we see that in the world? Well, Labour have proposed that. They win the next election, they propose that they will tax the rich more. They'll raise that 45% tax ban to 50, they've said, and they'll implement another tax ban starting at £80,000 up to £150,000. In Australia last year, they raised the marginal rate of income tax on the richest from 45% to 47%, just for a year, to fund more spending on healthcare. We look at transfer payments. The Labour Party proposed implementing new benefits and taking away caps on benefits to help the poor. Uh, generally, government spending on education and healthcare, Conservative Party in the UK have committed to increasing spending on both. Uh, you can see from my supply side policies um, video or in my UK key stats video there uh, exactly what the Conservative Party have pledged to do. Also rises in the minimum wage, yeah, uh, the Conservative Party have increased the living wage consistently over the last few years at a higher rate than inflation, good to know that. And the Northern Powerhouse idea, I talked about this in my UK stats video as well, to try and rebalance the UK economy, giving more power to councils up north, to bring jobs up north, to boost infrastructure up north, and try and reduce regional inequalities in the UK. So that covers all the key application you need for anything in micro. That means for paper one, you can absolutely smash it and back up anything you say with great application. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Memorize this detail now. Research more if you need to and smash that exam when it comes with awesome application. Your examiner is going to think, wow, you are incredible. Thank you, guys. I'll see you all in the next video.